I think music started with gospel. I can't imagine R&B music without the gospel influence. I'd say a large portion of the hip hop generation comes from a sort of church background. Gospel music influences all the music that is out there. Take a listen. Gospel music is in more places than you think. It's made its way onto dance floors, music videos, and some of MTV's biggest performances. Bottom line, gospel influences many of the hottest stars on the scene. And today, Jessica Simpson, P. Diddy, Pharrell, Destiny Child, and many more are going to show you how. Plus, Beyonce tells us about the inspiring music in her new movie, The Fighting Temptations, and how gospel has soared from the church to the truck. Before we lay out how gospel has got in most styles of songs, let's define it. What is gospel straight up? Gospel basically means good news. It's music that you're putting the good news in, which is basically a message about God, a message of peace, a message of love, and a message of hope. Gospel music is able to touch you in such emotions that words can't touch. It doesn't matter who you are, it's so powerful and it affects you. I think gospel music is just the music from the heart, man. It's just the music of God's people. I define gospel music as, you know, spiritual. A music that just felt real deep within. Music becomes great music because of the passion behind it. And I think gospel singers and gospel music comes from such a deep passion that doesn't have any restraint. You don't have to have a particular image. You don't have to be a certain size. You don't have to look a certain way. It's strictly all feeling. And people are moved and motivated by it. Gospel music to me is um, soulful music. <laughs> Okay, so we know what gospel is. Now let's trace how that gospel soul made its way into the music you listen to. If you think back to people like Marvin Gaye and uh, Aretha Franklin, you know, they got that soul from the church. I know the soulfulness, the soulfulness comes from that gospel. It comes from Aretha, who sang in the church. Can you, can you, if I do, I'm Whitney, also, you know, she'll tell you. That soul, that's when you hear that. That soul, when you hear all of that, that came from Dr. Moon. Everybody knows that that's where the soul is, man. Like, I mean, people like James Brown, I mean, the godfather of soul. He grew up in a church. Even the king wears a gospel crown. Justin Timberlake's idol Elvis Presley won his only Grammys for gospel music. For singers like Christina Aguilera, who never robed up with the choir, there's still only one degree of separation between their music and gospel music. She's doing all the riffs and stuff. Most of those runs and stuff, I mean, she probably learned it from listening to people like Whitney Houston, but Whitney Houston learned it from going to church, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so for today's artists, the gospel influences are Aretha, James Brown, Elvis, Whitney, and one artist you probably never heard of. Kim Burrell. Kim Burrell. Kim Burrell. Kim Burrell. Kim Burrell. I, I mean, I love her voice. I mean, she's... She's the def definition of singing to me. She's influenced so many artists. She's influenced uh, my music. Of course, she's influenced Destiny Child, Brandy, Whitney, Mariah. Everybody loves her. She's gospel. A lot of the artists have said, I have a jazz feel. Oh, you do things with your voice I've never heard before. And I had no formal training. When I open my mouth, I'm going for the pleasure of God. All of the real singers, Listen to Kim Burrell. 
all the real R&B singers. We all trying to do her ambits. We all trying to do her run. <laughs> R&B artists, the church choir is like singing 101. Superstars like Mary J. Blige, Snoop Dogg, Jessica Simpson, Stacey Arico, and Brandy all started singing in church. You know, I finally made it home. To really understand the link between having a choir background and chart success, we talked to someone behind many of today's hits. As a member of the production duo The Neptune, Pharrell has worked with the best in the biz. He made Snoop Dogg sound beautiful. Help Justin rock your body and Beyonce work it. So he knows what will bubble to the top. But does Pharrell think the church choir is a good training ground for singers on the come up? 100%. That's like the best training ground. Because there's so many people there, one, and you get to be around other people and you get that competitive atmosphere, but friendly friendly competitive atmosphere and you learn things from each other. I know being in a group and singing with other people's voices, you have to know how strong you sing, you know, what kind of tone, how to match vibratos, all different things. And the church is the best training. Growing up in my church choir really molded my voice. Like, I, I could sing, I could always sing, but whenever I got in a you know, church choir, my voice really came out. You know, it gave me that sense of independence, and that you know, sense that I could do it if I really wanted to. It certainly made me get over my shyness and fear of singing in front of a crowd. Well, I think the church choir is the training ground for harmony. I grew up singing in the church. That's where I, I learned how to sing. I never took any voice lessons or anything. That's kind of where it all started. Jessica Simpson learned how to sing performing in her father's church choir. So why is Jessica a solo artist and not a member of a girl group? Chalk it up to the choir. I belt out really, really loud when, when I sing. And, um, and it kind of overshadows the person next to me, and so I was not a good choir girl. I was definitely meant to be a solo artist. <laughs> For Beyonce, stage stunts are nothing compared to the vocal gymnastics she has to perform when she sings at her Houston church. I can perform at the Grammys, I can perform at the MTV Awards, and I'll be nervous, but not as nervous as I am when I get in front of my church and sing. like Justin Timberlake, Faith Evans, owe some of their biggest hits to holy music. And later we uncover why Chuch is more than a word to Snoop Dogg. Still ripping and kicking, flipping and spitting every stack, got you thinking, tripping, gripping and stack my just to see what's written in vision, breaking in the prison, living in the worst conditions, making decisions with conviction for the one that's the rhythm. Fly with a flip in the ribbon, they come in the shaking the bang and the hopping around in the moment, they come over the river size, they got you tripping, I'm ripping my phone, huh? The pony phone, for the young body, me hand this, still knocking out the hand this. It showed what a true artist she was, you know, how global she was in music. She got a choir and was like, I'm going to bring them to sing with me. The voice behind 15 chart toppers was inspired by the Baptist Church. I feel like Mariah Carey's voice comes from God. You can hear the gospel in her voice. It was very nice to see her in the church. The whole message in the video was just beautiful. I'm flying with Ruben Stutter may have been flying without wings, but he was definitely singing with the choir after he won American Idol. I heard the original version of Flying Without Wings, and then I heard his, and he completely blew the other one away. I didn't want to make the song sound really poppy. When I got in the studio, I just closed my eyes, and I imagined I was in the choir. Okay, so now we know that Pop's got the gospel feel, but believe it or not, 
Some of Rock's top artists have heavenly inspiration as well. You got the head banging, you know, groups that are doing the gospel music. So just two worlds colliding and showing people that gospel music is versatile. For POD, their spiritual influence is alive and well. When I first saw the video for the POD song, Alive, I thought, wow, that's going to like change people's lives forever when they watch that. They found that depth in the music. There's some aggressive songs, but once you get through the album, it's an uplifting type of thing. Even our single, Alive, it's just, we want to encourage people. We want to bring down Rock anybody. Songs, man. It's not the normal kind of gospel soul sound. I like the fact that they're sending that kind of gospel message but in a different way. I think that's pretty cool. If you can remember that one thing that brings you alive, and for me, that love that I have for my family, for, for these guys, you know, my faith and my belief in, in God, it just shapes and, and molds like our character. Thanks to Bring Me to Life, Evanescence landed a slot on the VMAs. It's amazing to be nominated. And the top spot on the Christian chart. Bring Me to Life is talking about the gospel message, but in a very relatable way. It's a rock band that kind of takes it to a different level, that gospel kind of soul feel. I think that's why Bring Me to Life um, was just so huge. So the church inspired some of rock's rough music, but it's behind the smooth tunes too. Gospel music has influenced uh, my music in many ways, you know. I do a lot of my own writing. I've always tried to, you know, tell people I always believe in God. I think every song of mine in some way or another is influenced by gospel music. When I first started really writing songs, I would always try and bring to mind my favorite gospel song to see if there were some melodies in there that might fit with this music. <laughs> so gone over you. Earlier this year, R&B queen Monica ruled the charts with So Gone, a song that was actually so gospel. Gospel music is what I originated from and it created my entire style. <laughs> You always hear in my voice that I'm a gospel singer. Monica and Brandy have more than a boy in common. Brandy also hit her first notes in church. With Brandy, I think you can hear it in her singing. There's something about a person that sings in church that touches you, you know what I'm saying? And Brandy, when she sings, she can touch you. Before 112 became bad boys, they were choir boys in Atlanta. Gospel music is a huge part of our lives. We grew up singing in the church. That's where we pretty much got our start. So we've seen how pop, rock, and R&B are influenced by gospel. Now we're going to find out how even hip-hop can get hope. Is it worth it? Let me work it. Gospel music definitely influenced Missy. She has a soul in her voice. Incredible. A lot of her hooks have gospel sound and harmonies in them. When you hear Mary, it sounds like you're hearing a gospel song. You can really feel what she's saying. Not many singers can touch you like she can. In 1994, Snoop was spending his days in court. So on VMA night, he took us to church and rock murder was the case with his shiny curls, a choir, and a cross. Ain't nothing like hearing a choir on stage. It's in your heart when you hear it. Snoop is a great storyteller because of the fact that he was raised in church. I know I be what I wanna be. Nas calls himself Godson, but his connection to the gospel isn't about the name game. Just peep his video for I Can. You can be anything in the world and God we trust. I think that the kids in Nas's video were like a choir. Be what I wanna be. When you hear gospel hip hop or gospel music, it's so positive. In 2001, Diddy rounded up his bad boy family for a spiritual video called You. <laughs> For his most memorable gospel showing, P. Diddy rolled in with a choir to celebrate the life of Notorious B.I.G. at the 1997 VMA. I think everybody was really emotional when the choir came out. But you heard the soul in the song. I know you're still living your life. Yeah. Yeah. sit back and be able to grasp hold of music and of gospel. It just took over me like spiritually. Seeing Biggie, seeing the choir, seeing Sting, seeing Faith, it was like life. It said chills down my spine. Up next we talk to the stars of the new movie The Fighting Temptations and see Beyonce throw down like you never have before. 
So we proved that gospel has made its way into pop, rock, R&B, and hip-hop, and now it's taken over the big screen. In the new movie, The Fighting Temptations, Beyonce stars as a single mom named Lily who sings in Cuba Gooding Jr.'s choir and falls for him, too. I love being back in the choir. It's amazing how, over the years, the music has moved people. It makes people feel better about themselves, you know? I wanted people to see me heavier, with more weight. I wanted people to see me with no makeup on. I wanted people to see me with my hair twisted and not straight and glamorous. Beyonce was hooked by the script and the importance of gospel in the movie. The music was so important um, and so powerful and uplifting. I had to do it. The song that, that is in the prison scene, and I'm singing a cappella, I think people will be really shocked to hear that. It felt great to go back and to, to show a more real side of myself and the things that inspire me and that touch me. Um, I know when I'm on the stage and when I'm in the videos, very sexy, it's almost like someone else. And I, I felt like it was important to show, you know, a real side of me and the importance of music. And you can hear it. I think the beauty of the movie is it has funky gospel music, traditional contemporary. Now. It has, you know, a little hip hop in it. We got some new hip hop in Monte Carlo, Georgia for y'all tonight. Yo, Brick, I'm sick of packing all these signs, slaying dimes and smoking all the marijuana, chilling with pretty mama from Havana. I feel like it's able to touch people of all different races and ages and to put so many different genres of music together just makes it that much more effective in getting the word out. T-Bone performs gospel rap for a living, so it's no wonder he was down to do the flick. I tell so many people that God is the language of love and hip-hop is the, the language of the streets. And what I do is I mix the two together and you see some awesome things take place. Because every day I'm seeing them work, I feel black. I don't want to do no more dirt, I feel black. Because the path I was on was wrong, I feel black. My favorite part of making the movie, I would say, would be the music part of it. Give them when I read the script, just reading the names that were going to be on there, Cuba Gooding Jr., Beyonce, the OJs, Faith Evans, Mike Epps, Steve Harvey, Montel Jordan, whoa, what a great opportunity to be able to work with some of the greatest names in music and in acting. You'd be really surprised um, how many people that you would never expect to have a relationship with God, they do. Certain things are entertainment. When people get in their homes, no one knows what they really do. No one knows their relationship with God personally. Therefore, you can't judge anybody, and that's what the whole message of the movie is. So you can find gospel in the theaters and on the charts. It's in VMA performances, number one hits, and big budget videos. Plus, chances are your favorite artist started singing in the church. So the next time you're sitting in the pew, take a good look at the choir. You just might see the next pop superstar. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Amazing grace, he took my place, paid the ransom, then got my sins erased. I was worth love. Mm-hmm.